Rosalind Carter, the former first lady of the United States. I want to bring in Jonathan Alter, Carter biographer and MSNBC political analyst, uh, to talk more about her life and her legacy. Um, Jonathan, thanks for joining us on this. Appreciate it. I know that you know the Carter family quite well. Um, talk us through, if you will, the legacy that Rosalind Carter leaves behind today. Um, well, thanks for having me on. Um, you know, this is a sad day for the Carter family, obviously, but I think it should also be a sad day for the United States because uh, Rosalind Carter uh, was one of the most formidable, influential first ladies in American history, and few people know it. So um, I think part of what I hope um, – will now come out is just what an important figure she was. So just to give you um, one small example of many, she was the greatest champion for mental health uh, at a high level that this country has ever had. And she um, got past the first uh, mental health, major mental health legislation in the United States in, in 1980. Um, and then, of course, um, you know, many other uh, contributions. Uh, she was responsible for getting 33 states to require vaccination before children could go to school, which we know, uh, you know, saved many lives. Um, and of course, then there are all the contributions in the post presidency that uh, Lester Holt just mentioned. So it's a big legacy. They had um, one of the most important presidential partnerships uh, in American history, and she deserves to be uh, spoken of in the same sentence as Eleanor Roosevelt and Hillary Clinton and Abigail Adams. You mentioned, Jonathan, how she was a fierce advocate um, of mental health. She made this campaign promise when her husband was running for president, um, saying that as first lady, she would make the welfare of the nation's mentally ill her priority, being the first um, potential first lady to make that campaign promise. Why was she so dedicated to this? You know, uh, when her husband was first running for, for governor in 1966, he lost that year and then was uh, elected in 1970 in Georgia. Um, she just found uh, a lot of um, people uh, around the state who had me untreated mental health issues, and she became an advocate as First Lady of Georgia. But, you know, there are a lot of um, First Ladies and politicians who make promises. She kept that promise. And the Mental Health Systems Act yeah. of 1980, um, you know, was enacted. Unfortunately, Ronald Reagan's administration defunded that bill. So many of the provisions for community mental health uh, were not uh, reenacted until Obamacare 30 years later. But in the meantime, you know, through the Carter Center, She's um, she ha she did a, an important job championing mental health. She set up fellowships for journalists who were interested in mental health issues, um, and then more broadly, she founded something called the Rosalind Carter Center for Caregiving. And you know, when uh, back in the the 70s, that concept of caregiving didn't really exist. There were a lot of people giving care, but it wasn't seen as, seen as a you know, a major role in American society the way it is now. And I think the idea of putting caregiving as a concept on the map uh, is um, is part of her legacy. Jonathan, if you will stand by for me, I want to bring in Kelly O'Donnell now uh, to talk more about this. We were just learning of the passing of former First Lady Rosalind Carter. Um, Kelly, talk us through what more you know. Well, we know that Mrs. Carter was surrounded by family when she passed away this afternoon. And this has been a time where the family has had a chance to really see some of the reaction to both President Carter and Mrs. Carter over these last several months. And that is a rare and, I think, appreciated part of what has gone on as the country has had a chance to say thank you to the Carters over these months. Back in February, President Carter chose to uh, and her hospice care so he could remain at home and staying with Mrs. Carter. And then a couple of months later, they publicly announced her dementia diagnosis. And they have made their home in Plains, and they are so much a part of Plains, Georgia, that the entire community is certainly feeling this. And part of what we have seen in these months is that there has been reflection on their public service, 
on their contributions. And they were able, according to people close to the family, to see that, to take that in, and to experience that. And it is a long time since they were in office, from 1977 to 1981. But they have had lives of public contribution and service in all the decades since. And it is remarkable that they were able to see that. Being together was a very key part of this last chapter for the family, wanting President and Mrs. Carter to be able to live in their home, to be among the things they loved. And the community of Plains, where I've spent some time over the years, has always been very much about the Carter's good works. As Jonathan was talking about her contributions to caregiving, the work that has gone on and the kinds of public service they've done in the name of the Carters, where they've inspired others to give food to those in need, projects to uh, rebuild and support homes in the Plains area, part of the local community. And then, of course, the global reach of the Carter Center, where Mrs. Carter was very much a partner with her husband, uh, the former president. At a time when they were in the White House, she was also notable in remaking part of the first lady role in some way. She attended some cabinet meetings. That was at times controversial, but it was part of what she, she did, and she felt that it would allow her to give good advice and counsel uh, to the then president. And so you really see reflected in their long marriage, the longest of all presidential couples at 77 years. Uh, they reached that milestone in July. She's also the longest lived, uh, second only to Bess Truman, who lived about a year and a half longer. So their long lives are part of their legacy, but they were lives enriched with action and doing, and that was certainly part of the legacy of Mrs. Carter. Of course, we're all thinking of President Carter, who himself is frail, mm. 99 years old, uh, but the family together, and um, they have said for some time in different ways through the family that they have been at peace, that they have been ready for whatever next chapter would come. So today is a bittersweet day, one where her life uh, has come to its conclusion in this world, but they are people of deep faith, and certainly the community around them will be celebrating the life of Rosalind Carter. Yasmin? It is, it is always unbelievable um, to lose someone like Rosalind Carter, who made such a mark on this country um, and this world alongside um, the former president of the United States and her husband, um, Jimmy Carter, who is still um, in hospice care. Um, Kelly, I know that this just happened, but do do we know at all um, what the plans are to honor Rosalind Carter's life? Well, we know that these sorts of plans are made in advance with all presidential couples. And the military district of Washington is involved whenever a former president passes away. But expect this to be a very plain centric part of uh, the days ahead. Uh, that information will be forthcoming. And certainly, uh, Rosalind Carter was born in Plains in 1927, lived much of her life in Plains, uh, apart from time in Atlanta when she was the First Lady of Georgia, time in Washington during the Carter presidency. And then, of course, they have traveled the world. Uh, so her impact is far-reaching. Uh, mother of three sons, one daughter, grandmother. Uh, so there is a lot of family and a lot of community in Plains. In many ways, that small town uh, has been a part of the Carter story. And part of the decision that President and Mrs. Carter made along the way is they willed their personal home to the National Park Service. Many of the landmarks of that community, her childhood home, his boyhood farm, the school where they attended, are parts of the National Park Service. Uh, she will be buried right there in Plains uh, near their home property. They have uh, sort of a, a, a sprawling piece of property in Plains. So she will not go very far. Uh, but that is very much in fitting with uh, the sort of stamp of her life, a global figure who was very much always at home in Plains. In September, when they ventured out one last time in public that we're aware of uh, mm -hmm. for the Peanut Festival, uh, she and uh, President Carter were in the van driven by their Secret Service detail. Uh, that detail has been with them for a very long time. And typically the Secret Service that is assigned to a 
first lady and a president will stay with them now in this phase uh, and will stand post uh, with her remains and be with her until her ultimate internment. And so there are a lot of rituals and gestures and traditions that will play out over the next days. And as soon as we get more specific details, we will certainly share them. The Carter Center and the Carter family have prepared. Uh, and so they know what the next steps will be. And there is this moment now. Uh, in some ways, as we head into the Thanksgiving holiday, it, it sort of perfectly dovetails with that, where the country can be grateful for her service and her long life. Mm -hmm and uh, that she was able to uh, pass at home with loved ones. Uh, I believe that is what she wanted, and God granted that wish.